we have seen in the last two and a half, three weeks here in Australia, the biggest stampede in Australian history in the silver market from synthetic to physical. They go by the name of Silver Ape, Silver Stackers and Wall Street Silver. The 123,000 plus members encourage each other to buy bars and coins as a hedge against inflation. Silver in particular, which seems to be the next target of this so-called Reddit cohort or the merry men, I guess you may still be calling them, Jim. I mean, we have seen in the last two and a half, three weeks here in Australia, the biggest stampede in Australian history in the silver market from synthetic to physical. Um, so I have had all sorts of customers um, before Easter. Um, you know, we're talking um, 10, 11, 12 tons that I can record um, by multiple clients who have switched from uh, these synthetic products to physical. We are seeing a revolution in the silver market. And the reason why Dunnigan is because um, when a, a retail investor realizes they own nothing, um, and they want to legally own um, some silver, and they make the switch from unallocated or pull allocated or an ETF to um, either physical direct ownership that they will take um, away and, and store it somewhere themselves, or if they go to allocated and they have a, a counterparty storing it for them, they will never go back to synthetic. They will never go back to a synthetic product. But also in the private sector uh, in Australia that offer these synthetic products, uh, I have connections across the industry um, and they have said that uh, their own clients have come en masse to stand for physical delivery um, and, they're, and they're getting out of these the synthetic products. And so since then, um, people around the world are waking up to this, um, this situation with synthetic uh, gold and silver. They're making the switch. And what we're seeing is a structural uh, permanent change to the silver market um and that and that hasn't abated this week so so again um the more physical that gets drained out of the system that's going to exacerbate shortages right across the network and that's going to obviously apply more pressure at comex and so craig kemke you know he's, he's he's one of the best experts in this uh area and he was able to see before anyone else um and and, and obviously um what he precisely said has come to be and uh, i think People around the world are now waking up to this fractional reserve nature um, of what's going on. Um, and that is obviously um, driving investment behavior. The other key point I'll say, Dunnigan, is, is that the public relations campaign of the Perth Mint has been an absolute catastrophe um, over the last three weeks. Uh, Richard Hayes, the CEO of the Perth Mint, has attempted to restore confidence among Australian customers um, by using the mainstream media, um, all, all propaganda pieces, no tough questions, um, no, no investigative journalism by the Australian press to date. Um, and, and, and that has not um, inspired confidence. Every time he speaks, he's, he's actually um, making people question him in the Perth Mint even more. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, other, the other thing I will say is, I think the Perth Mint has completely misjudged its customer base. Um, the Australian press in general don't speak about gold and silver on a regular basis. Um, Australian customers who want information about the market they go to the alternative media. Richard Hayes wanted to actually calm the Australian market down. I'm going to give it to you straight and we're going to actually talk to Australian investors directly. And so by the fact that he tried to go through the mainstream media route, um, he again, completely misjudged the market and uh, he's actually helped exacerbate this situation in, the, in Australia by the way he's been speaking on the, on the record. He speaks like a banker. There has been uh, more silver flowing out of the Perth Mint. Um, so uh, again, not everyone is successful, but there are some. There is a, a high success rate of people actually getting some silver. There is evidence that the Perth Mint has changed its production schedule. So whereas there was a four month wait on one kilo bars, there are, they're actually producing quite a few number of kilo bars um, over the last say a week to a week and a half. So I think the public pressure has actually resulted in the Perth Mint changing its production schedule and they're producing more silver for their investors, both for new orders as well as for their synthetic customers. Um, um, but but still, even though that silver is flowing, um, there's been a lack of communication about what is what is the real situation at the Perth Mint. And you know, now um, they have been importing, from what I understand, um, quite a bit of uh, product out of China. But but uh, but what they have been typically doing is they've been melting them down and recasting them as Perth Mint bars. And obviously, by doing that. They can be assured that 
the, the you know the bars are you know 99.9 percent purity um, and everything's above board but um with some of these other bars this week rather than actually melting them down and recasting them they're actually just saying we're going to sell you a direct chinese bar and there's a lot of australians who don't want that i mean they, they're doing business with the perth mint because they want a perth mint bar uh because the perth mint is internationally rec internationally recognized as a uh, 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 in terms of being a refiner of, of the highest quality in terms of their quality of their standard and their reputation um, and, and that has been a huge controversy um, and, and that's obviously driven some concerns and and the other I think big thing is is that um, now now we're moving away from uh, talking only about Perth now there are conversations about other um, shortages around the world um, so um, the largest online dealer in the UK called Bullion by Post uh, they appear a couple of days ago to be running short of coins. Um, so, so there was a, a limitation as to how much could be placed on order. Um, then, then at the UK Mint, they ran out of silver bars. Um, so you go into their website and typically it says it's in stock. So for silver bars, there was nothing in stock, whereas for coins, there was still product in stock. And obviously there are now questions about uh, the synthetic products of Kitco. Um, so um, I've had, I've heard rumors over the last few weeks about Kitco, but then I've had people who are directly have contacted Kitco and have been basically told. So one person um, sent me a long message yesterday and I reposted on Twitter. He was told point blank by a Kitco employee that Kitco's product is not 100% backed. Um, and, and, and so, uh, you know, this is a conversation that's happening around the world. And I think people's eyes are being opened. Um, and, 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 you know, we're going to sort of take this forward. If those who are saying there's a cons an, an international syndicate and there's a conspiracy, if you think this is too far-fetched, you just have to ask the question, how did Craig Kempke write an article on the 2nd of February saying that Perth, Zurich or Montreal is going to blow up? And it blew up. So the fact that Craig Kempke could foresee it and he called it, that should tell journalists who don't have expertise in the silver market that, that there is something of an international nature going on. And that's why Craig, Craig Kempke could forecast it before anyone else. If someone actually like actually took wrote down how much money there is in these synthetic products around the world and added them all up, we're talking the billions of dollars. And so, um, the, the you know when we talk about the movement, I mean we are the whale. I mean those with synthetic products, if they on mass, and I should say I mean they are um, in a big way at least in Australia, maybe a lesser extent in Europe and North America. But in a big way in Australia, they are the money is moving, and so. But if this was a global movement um, across US, Canada, UK, Europe, if we all moved our money from synthetic to physical, we, we're talking billions of dollars, and we're talking billions. Of, you know, we're talking you know hundreds of millions of ounces. Uh, and, and so, um, while everyone's sort of thinking that there is a, a number of whales uh, uh, circulating uh, around the, the COMEX for the main contract. Um, all I can say is, is that um, if you think that you have no power and this is a hopeless situation about uh, stopping silver market manipulation, I mean, you are the power. You, you have that power. So whether it's about placing a new order um, with, with, uh, with any sort of physical bullion dealership to get uh, more ounces in your physical legal ownership, or whether you have a synthetic position and you actually go convert that to, um, to allocated or to physical delivery, um, that, that is how we are going to move the ball forward.